All right, y'all. Hope everybody is good today. Welcome back. All right. Today I'm going to be going over how to write a compound inequality for a graph. All right. Now, what you see here is a graph. Some of y'all may know it as a number line. All right. And you have two situations. You have something going on over here where there's uh, number one with an open circle and then it's shading to the right of it. And then there's a negative three with an open circle and the shading to the left of it. All right. So I'm going to show you how to take these two inequalities, all right, and turn them into one, which is a compound inequality. Now, when you think about the word compound, just think about very simply, just like a compound sentence or a compound word, where you're taking two things and you're turning them into one. All right. We have two things here. We're going to turn it into one. Here we go. So the first thing I want to do is I want to use a variable, all right? A lot of times, people like to use x. So I'm going to use an x, all right? And then on the other side of this x, give some space because something's going to go in the middle. You're going to write a number, all right? This is our first step over here. So the number that you're going to write is going to be the first number you see if you read it from the left to the right. So that's a negative 3 with the open circle. I'm going to write a negative 3 in there. All right. Now there's space in the middle. The reason that there's space in the middle is because that's where I'm going to put my inequality sign. All right. These bad fellas over here, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. I'm going to put one of those in. How do I know which one to put in? Well, it's very, very simple. What I say is look at the direction that's being shaded. OK, it's being shaded to the left. So that's real simple. I'm just going to make an inequality with a point going in that same direction. So I have a point going over to this way, just like the arrow is being shaded, this way, to the left, all right? So that becomes x is less than negative 3. Cool. Now we have to do the same thing, step 2, repeat step 1 for the second number. We're going to do the same thing for this side, this right side, where you have the shading going on around the 1, okay? Or to the right of the 1, I should say. So I'm going to use x again, use whatever letter whatever letter or variable that you want. I really don't care. Okay. And then I'm going to put this number one. Boom. Okay. Again, what goes in the middle? I'm going to look at the direction of the shading. The shading is going to the right. So if that's the case, I'm going to make an inequality with my point going to the right. Very, very simple. Okay. So that's my setup. The last thing is I'm going to take these two and I'm going to turn them into one compound inequality. All right, so here we go. I put my x in the middle. All the way at the ends, I'm going to put my lower number, and then I'm going to put my higher number. So on the left side, my lower number is negative 3. So I put a negative 3 over here, and then my higher number is going to be a 1. So I'm going to put my 1 all the way over here. Now all I have to do is I have to then take the inequality symbols that I see here and just place them where they belong inside these spaces, okay? So the way that I do that, very simple again. I'm going to look at the negative 3, and I'm going to make a comparison to this one down here. I'm going to say that this negative 3, the wide side of the inequality is facing the negative 3. So I'm just going to do the same thing down here. Wide side facing the negative 3. That side is cool. This is saying that x is less than negative 3, the same way it says up here. x is less than negative 3, okay? Now, I'm going to look at the other number and compare 1 and 1. Okay, the point is facing the 1. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Make the point face the 1. Now I have x is greater than 1, okay? And if I put it all together, this will read negative 3 is greater than x and or you can say or negative 3 is greater than x we'll say or or greater than 1 okay again negative 3 is greater than x or greater than 1 and that's what you have here negative 3 is greater than x so this negative 3 here is going to be larger than all of these x values shaded and then x is greater than 1 x which is all of the shaded information, is greater, larger than 1, okay? And that is your final answer, right?